Over Dokkan's lifespan, many impactful units have come out to change how the game is thought of in the eyes of the community. Today, we'll be going over the top 10 most impactful units in Dokkan history. As always, please note that these lists are of course, carefully calculated through an intense algorithm. And without further ado, let's get on with the list. And coming in at number 10, we have STR Cooler and Tech Ultimate Gohan. Now, of course, it's really hard to talk about Dokkan history without, of course, talking about one of the most, I guess, iconic rivalries in the game's history, right? You know, you got STR Cooler, who supports the Transformation Boost category, which was one of the best categories in the game when he came out. Still a really decent category to this day. But of course, when he first came out, like, Cooler was just far and away the best TUR. He had a dominant transformation condition. And then when he transformed, he did guaranteed crits against hybrid Saiyans and pure Saiyans and did so much damage. And he just, you know, led like the best team in the game. And he had a great Link set on release. And then it got even more buffed when the Link level update came out. And he was like the best TUR for like nine months until, of course, Tech Ultimate Gohan came out, who was just Tech Gohan, man. He was an enigma. You know, we've all seen enough. Tech Ultimate Gohan's better. Like, this guy was like top 20, 30 units in the game, virtually from release to like two and a half years after. Like, it was ridiculous. Man. The run that this guy went on, of course, he's got the greatly stacking plus the guard. And then his link set was helped out greatly with the Saiyan lineage becoming a real key link after the link level update, which he was either the first TUR who released right before the link level update or right after. Because I remember like this was the guy who right right around his release had the link level update. And of course, you could transform him, but you really didn't need to when he was prior to his EZA. And then, of course, STR Cooler got a great EZA. He was pretty solid for when he released. He got defense stacking on his 12 key super attack and he had the ability to potentially triple super and then his transformation boost support became 2 key and 50% just all the time instead of the 2 key and 30% that it was prior to his easy end. and of course after he transformed he just got even more powerful and yeah he was great I mean cooler great and then of course Tech Ultimate Gohan he's like right now the best easy ATR in the game probably right now he's got that 30% damage reduction and the additional 58% defense on his first turn which I swear is underrated. Like, he's not going to be able to, like, paint, like, a dominant super attack or something. But, like, it's it's noteworthy. And, of course, he can potentially quadruple super. And he's still, you know, got this guard greatly stacking. It's just dominant. His transformation is pretty good. Does some great damage. Good defense. He's just overall really good. You know, he's got a better super attack effect. And a 70% chance to stun. He's just good. That's Tech Ultimate Gohan. Has to cooler. They're going to come in at number 10. Let's move on to number 9. Now, coming in at number 9, we get the blue fuse. I'm not gonna lie, they didn't really like impact like change the game or something crazy but i mean it's hard to make a list like this about the most impactful units in the game's history without talking about the most successful banner in dokkan history like the blue fusions are the most successful units in dokkan history you can argue with a wall it's just the numbers they were also the burst anniversary units with just the jaw-dropping animations i'm not gonna lie if you weren't there on that night slash morning in late january when their animations dropped it was like life altering just how godly the animations were like the blue fusions are just so raw they've just got so much aura and like of course the blue fusions like you know there are also just great units prior to their EZA you know doing all that they did having the 50% chance to dodge in slot 3 and stacking attack and base on their super attack effects and then they could transform on turn 4 and then they're building up in slots 1 and 2 50% chance to dodge in slot 3 of course they have their amazing active skills which could be activated on the turn after they transform their next appearance provided that there was one in it. and they're just dominant and then of course you know you get their easy a's involved where they essentially just do everything they did but even better right they get dodge for their first turn after they transform giving them the ability to stack up some of their passive they're also able to build up in any slot now and of course you know they have their active skill heck where you can use it in slot three and then get that dodge just built in for that turn and yeah i mean overall the blue fusions are just dominant man just so impactful they're just dokkan is not the same without the blue fusions in that game's history they're gonna come in at number nine moving on to number eight now coming in at number eight we have lr str bulma which of course i mean let's just cut straight to the chase she's got the just godly two turn support three key 37 percent attack and defense for multiple turns just godly game altering support and of course bulma herself is just 
just a really good unit. Even still, to this day, she's runnable. She's got her really great super attack effects. She guards for seven turns. She creates rainbow key spheres. She builds up her damage reduction. She's a nuker. She gets guaranteed additional super. She's got her active skill, which su supports even more. Seven key, 17% to all allies. It's a full heal with all the STR key spheres it creates. And it makes all the allies super effective against all types for the turn. Just really good. She's just, yeah, really good. She's just kind of raw, man. She's just so good. I mean, there's really not much to say with Bulma, right? Like, the two-turn support, like, she was, like, the first unit. Like, Yajirobe was cooking, but, like, she was the first unit, first premium unit to have this, and she, boy, oh, boy, did she run the meta for a good chunk of time. Like, you could legit feel the difference of when you had Bulma on the team versus when you didn't. She's gonna come in at number eight. Let's move on to number seven. Coming in at number seven, it's LR Orange Piccolo. We all really know what he does. He's got some awesome super attack effects. You know, they're solid. 50% defense for the turn on both. He, of course, has guard for three turns. He's got the minuscule damage reduction. He builds up every time he gets hit, and then he obviously can potentially just become super, super good if he gets hit seven times and his HP is under 30% HP at the start of the turn. And then he gets 50% damage reduction, full heal, and he's just really good. But of course, I mean, obviously in base, he's, he's not really a slot one unit anymore, even with his guard. Like, he kind of needs to super to be, like, solid. But, I mean, everybody, the giant form being broken is just what keeps this guy probably just going to be forever relevant, right? The turn three condition is just really good. And then, of course, you know, he does his, he doesn't, do, doesn't really do damage. You know, I mean, it is free damage. It's not a crazy amount, but I guess, you know, free damage is free damage. I mean, of course, it's going to be blocked out in like something like the Supreme Battle Spectacle Goku and Frieza fight, but you know, he's invincible for the turn. And of course, once the giant form disengages, he can literally, you know, just cock block everything the enemy does, man. He can only normal attack, right? There's no AoEs, no supers, nothing, not as Zulp Zip Zero can't heal like he just can't do anything yeah i mean it's just that giant form is just broken and orange piccolo is still the premium giant form unit right i mean the next giant form unit will probably be relevant for a while too as long as the condition is pretty good so yeah that's gonna be lr orange piccolo he's gonna come in at number seven moving on to number six now coming in at number six it's lr beast gohan the unit who has the game in basically a chokehold right now right i mean what hasn't been said that i haven't already said about lr Beast Gohan, right? He leads the best team in the game. He's got dominant super attack effects. He can build up to 80% damage reduction, guaranteed guard, which is just stupid, like super fair and balanced. Obviously gets guaranteed additional super attacks. Gives all allies key when he gets hit. Builds up crit chance every time he gets hit. Like, the man really is kind of just the eye in team, man. And of course, he's got the dominant active skill taunt. Which, I mean, if you use it on the, in those first five turns, he's got the million defense, 80% damage reduction, he's unkillable. I mean, he's really hard to kill even with when he loses the 80% damage reduction and it just goes down to 40. But like, I mean, it's dominant links. You know, Beast Gohan is just, like, he's just it. Like, I don't even know how you really age this guy to be honest like eh, i'm scared for what they have cooking for that's gonna replace this guy i mean low-key beast gohan is just the main character of dokkan right now right we're all just living in beast's world and he's gonna come in at number six for free like it's ridiculous too because like the ninth year anniversary and and onwards like the fights have been ridiculous but it low-key doesn't even feel like it because of how just game altering beast is bro like he was almost just a mistake at this point like jeez yeah i mean he's gonna be number six number five is coming up coming in at number five is the seventh anniversary fusions they're gonna be on here because they of course began the 200 percent category meta which i would argue is the biggest power cliff in this game's history i mean some people will argue the ninth year anniversary but i mean we got broken units that are on the boss's level like beast gohan the sixth year anniversary lr EZAs, cell max those type of units man so it just feels like the seventh anniversary just killing off like 90 95 percent of the game is just a bigger deal of course the guy Gods, the LR gods and the LR Super Saiyan 4s themselves were great. I'd argue that they're probably the least dominant anniversary LRs on release. Like, they dominated, but they didn't, like, have that unkillable feeling to them that most of the other anniversary 
CLRs had, in my opinion. I mean, the algorithm's opinion. Of course, they stacked in base, had guard for the first turn. They launched an additional super attack at 20 key, super effective against all types at 24. And then on turn four, they could fuse slash transform. And of course, they had the nullification of the enemy actions on their 18 key super attacks. Of course, they were the first units in this game's history to have it. They obviously, of course, had super good super attack effects. The LR Blues got crit and dodge chance per key sphere, whereas LR Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta got crit and damage reduction. LR Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta was also built in a super effective against all types, with a 50% chance of launching an additional super attack, whereas the gods could be super effective against all types when key was 16 or more and did a guaranteed additional super when key was 20 or more. And then they had a built in additional 30% chance to dodge. And of course, Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta had the powerful 50% chance to counter enemy super attack effects, which was also later in 2022 changed to be not a dodge anymore so they could actually dodge units that are counter units that dodge or rather cancel dodging like you know red zone full power broly i mean yeah i mean the 7th anniversary lrs are just great but that's gonna be the lr gods the lr super saiyan fours are gonna come in at number five top four let's go now coming in at number four it's tech super saiyan 4 Gogeta and physical omega obviously prior to their easy a's their easy a's Super Saiyan 4, I mean, their easy were okay, right? They were nothing crazy, though, bro. Lucky they should have done them better. But of course, these were the originators of the category meta, which is to be released. But anyways, I mean, they were really good, and they led pretty good teams. The Shadow Dragon Saga was pretty niche, even on Omega's release, but like, it, it got such a big buff that it was cool. Of course, you know, the fusion category was pretty good. Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta was obviously very good. Really good super tech effect, 70% chance to counter... The super attack lowered in extreme class enemies attack and defense by 20%. Just really good. Obviously great links. Super Saiyan for Rotito. Ooga Booga Man, right? You know, the, the iconic counter and then he's just looking at you and then he kicks you in the face, bro. It's great. And then Omega, just a very strong unit. Good at doing the damage. Built in additionals. A chance to be a super attack. What is that, like 15% chance? Like, that's crazy. Crazy how they did not like built in additionals way back when. That's crazy. They're just good. I mean, there's not really much to say about these guys. Like, they were just super good. This is obviously back in a time where Dokkan was a lot more simple of a game. Nowhere near the gigantic essay paragraphs that you're getting in passive skills nowadays with transformations and everything. But yeah, that's going to be Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta and Mega Shenron. They're going to come in at number four. Let's go on to the top three. Now, I'm not going to lie. The only reason I really have these guys on here is to satisfy the old heads. It's, you know, STR Super Gogeta, AGL Super Vegito. Obviously, I mean, I'm going to say it and say it again like for the millionth time, but I, of course, was not playing when these guys came out. So I'm sorry. I have no idea, you know, I'm sorry that I'm not glazing them to their required perfection beacons that they used to be. Yes, I get that Super Gogeta was made everyone's account fodder, irrelevant, garbage dumpster fodder, and that he was super effective against all types, so he couldn't be slowed down by type disadvantage, and he had a rainbow key leader skill, rainbow leader skill, and he had great links, and he was just, you know, god. And of course, that AGL Super Vegito could counter, and he couldn't take damage, and he was the first three key, 70% lead. I get it, I get it, I get it, okay? Low key, I might just just like ban talking about units that I wasn't playing for maybe <laughs> is that because that crazy I don't know man but I mean all jokes aside right you have, obviously these two are some of the most OG dominant units in this game's history true icons amongst the old heads the unks of the Dokkan community they're gonna come in at number three let's go on to number two now coming in at number two we have physical Kefla obviously Physical Kefla herself was pretty good, but like, really, that aside is irrelevant. We're of course going to talk about the 300 stone fiasco that was a result of her banner where the game had its code revealed to the public and all. You know, we obviously had people in Japanese news articles about Dokkan saying that the game had rigged rates and that it was scamming the people. Like, Dokkan could have probably just died out from the controversy, right? And of course, everyone knows that the infamous results of what happened was that 
you know, JP Dokkan was given 300 dragon stones, along with full refunds on the banners, which is crazy. Obviously, it's one of the most controversial and infamous happenstances in Dokkan history, right? People, you know, for so long complained about, oh man, why does Global not get the 300 dragon stones? JP got 300 free dragon stones for a banner chain or a banner image or whatever. I mean, it's, it's always good to see, right? People talk about events like this, obviously. I mean, an event like this is obviously gonna push the people who believe that Global gets treated like the ugly stepchild of you know, between JP and Global Dokkan. It's just gonna make more sentiment in the community, saying that JP always gets treated better, which I mean, hey, it is what it is. That's gonna be Physical Kefla and the 300 stone fiasco. It's gonna come in at number two. Moving on to number one. Coming in at number one, it is AGL Metal Cooler. The greatest thing that could have ever been done for Dokkan. Now, low-key, you could have also given the spot to LR Goku and Frieza, but I like to think that AGL Metal Cooler was the first. Of course, what I'm talking about is units with the great, I mean, beautiful animations that are basically Dokkan's major selling point to this day, right? Like, I mean, most people just love the aesthetic, the drip, the, the finesse of these units and how beautiful their animations are, how their active skills look more so than even their kits, right? A majority of most people's favorite units in this game are more often than not a result of how their animations look more than even their kits from what I've seen. Obviously, Metal Cooler was a good unit, but like he, that day, shortly after the, what was it, the 200 million? No, the 250 million download celebration, right? Where obviously Transforming Goku and Frieza came out and then LR Goku and Frieza came out in number part number two. And of course they had their crazy beautiful animations, 177% leader scale, all that type of stuff. But like, I mean, when Metal Cooler's animations dropped, people were actually like stunned, right? They're like, whoa, right? Like, is this, what did Dokkan do? They took their time with this unit. They made sure this unit was drip. I mean, it was jaw dropping how good Metal Cooler's animations were, right? Like you could understand with LR Goku and Frieza, right? You know, that's a super hype unit, but Metal Cooler is just a, I hate to say another Dokkan Fest, but he was just another Dokkan Fest. You know, it's crazy too, because STR Superboo just came out right before him and his animations were fodder garbage. But Metal Cooler, like his animations, his really good animations are started the precipice where we can expect all these units for ever since to have just really, really good animations. And as Dokkan, right now for the last while several years has been carried more on animations more than hype or anything else like metal cooler is for sure definitely the most impactful unit in this game's history without metal cooler many of your favorite units in this game just basically don't exist right or their animations are just just simply fodder you're gonna have like str super boo and his animations where he's absorbing gohan or whoever in just black space you have just sprites kicking and beating each other around right like nothing like the beautiful animations that we get these days but yeah that's gonna be LR Metal Cooler he's gonna come in at number one let me know down below what you thought of my list if you think anybody was snubbed or if you think that the order should have been different but of course just know that if you disagree with the algorithm you are factually incorrect but of course as always that's gonna do it for me thanks for stopping by